We turn first to Russia. After President Putin's full-scale invasion of Ukraine last year, Russia became the most sanctioned nation on Earth. Until now, the Kremlin found ways around the embargoes, but the pain couldn't be avoided forever. On Monday, the ruble fell to its lowest level in 16 months. The bright red light on one of Moscow's many exchange places could have been seen as a sign of alarm. The ruble at 102 to the dollar on Monday, hitting its weakest level since the start of the war. On Tuesday, the currency showed signs of life after the central bank stepped in, raising rates to 12 percent at the Kremlin's behest. After all, the political leadership said it was loose monetary policy that had weakened the ruble. Muscovites have long been concerned over the trend. Everything becomes more and more expensive. I wish our salaries grew the same as the dollar exchange rate does. I think we will feel the weakening ruble later, because we always see this trend when the dollar is rising. It is followed by the prices rising in the stores. Of course, this will affect us. And it likely will for some time. The central bank, even though it followed the Kremlin's orders, says its policy isn't the reason behind the ruble's weakness, but the absence of trade. Indeed, the ruble has been under pressure ever since Russia attacked Ukraine. International sanctions have led to export revenues dwindling. Russia's gross domestic product is down. The country is in recession. For more on this, I'm joined now by Maximilian Hess. He's a fellow at the Foreign Policy Research Institute. Hi, Maximilian. Maximilian, Hi, the ruble worth less than one US cent on Monday. What does that mean for people living in Russia? Well, it certainly is going to have a real impact uh, on Russians' uh, ability to afford basic goods. You know, we just heard um, some uh, very good comments from Russians on the street there. I don't think it will have too much immediate impact on uh, the overall quality of life, but we have to remember quality of life in Russia is still below 2013 levels, and it's a psychologically very uh, symbolically important level. Right. So why did Russia's currency take a dive now. Well, essentially, you know, 18 months into the war, we're still in a situation where despite the Kremlin imposing significant um, capital controls, despite sanctions, uh, there's a lot of demand in Russia for money to get out of that economy. You know, you just need to look at an uh, airport in uh, Istanbul or in Dubai, um, and there's very little demand for actually buying Russian products, at least in rubles. What Russia does still sell internationally is its oil, found a lot of new customers uh, in India and Asia there, but that's all dollar denominated. And what makes this so worrying for the Russian state is they just ended their process known as the budget rule through which they convert uh, currencies from dollars that they earn through those sales to the ruble. Um, they had abandoned that a week ago. And so there's a lot of question now about what this will mean for the ruble's trajectory going forward. And adding to those woes is that the oil price has actually strengthened, which should make the ruble uh, increase in value. But instead, it was falling off a cliff over the weekend. Right. So what's the role of sanctions in all of this? Did they cause the, the dive? Uh, certainly, they caused the dive in two ways. One, you know, with a lot of Russians seeking to get their money out of the country at the beginning of last year, the Kremlin then weaponized its gas supplies, effectively drove prices up for that. Uh, that really helped the ruble recover through last year. But now we've essentially reached this place where sanctions mean uh, that it's so hard to, you know, buy or do trade or invest in Russia with rubles. So that's decreased the demand uh, for the Russian currency there. And then even more importantly, because they target the Russian central bank and Russia's ability uh, for its government to use those dollars that it earns, essentially a dollar or a euro or a Swiss franc or a yen, once it crosses the digital or physical frontier with Russia, is now worth somewhat less than any other unit of that currency that's abroad. And so that's, you know, an even bigger turnoff for the Russian economy on a macro level, of course, for individual companies and the like that have been directly targeted by sanctions. Uh, there are very significant additional um, sort of uh, uh, microeconomic impacts as well. Right, so sanctions biting there. Thank you so much, Maximilian Hess.